the Lord and ruler will be coming soon and his name will be called Emmanuel because he will be God with us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to this SVP Mass of the 21st of December and we're saying the Mass of the 21st and of course the readings also of the 21st. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries today, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord of Mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of Mercy. You are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father, Lord of Mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in the flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved, see how he comes, leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the window, he peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice. He says to me, Come then, my love, my lovely one, come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the season of glad songs has come, the cooing of the turtle dove is heard in our land, the fig tree is forming its first figs, and the blossoming vines give out their fragrance. Come then, my love, my lovely one, come, my dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock, in the coverts of the cliff. Show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. The word of the Lord. Bring out your joy to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-string lute sing him songs. Oh, sing him a song that is new, play loudly with all your skill. His own designs shall stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. In him do our hearts find joy. We trust in his holy name. Alleluia, alleluia. O key of David, who opened the gates of the eternal kingdom, come to liberate from prison the captive who lives in darkness. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zachary's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
she gave a loud cry and said of all women you are the most blessed and blessed is the fruit of your womb why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord for the moment your greeting reached my ears the child in my womb leapt for joy yes blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled the gospel of the Lord many people like to jet off for Christmas at least they used to jet off for Christmas but as a result of course of the pandemic not just local travel but especially trips abroad have been severely curbed I just wonder is God telling us something through all of this through all this confusion surely Christmas is more about staying at home than getting away one of the songs that I play for Christmas, it's from Ireland, and it's entitled Going Home for Christmas, and the singer can't wait to be at home, where he says his heart belongs. Now we see in the Gospel story today where Mary's heart belonged. She couldn't wait to be with her cousin or, or kinswoman Elizabeth. The Gospel says that she went as quickly as she could to visit her. Again now, because of COVID-19, full family get-togethers this Christmas would be very much scaled back. The same applies to gatherings at funerals and weddings, and that's been going on for some time. Social media gives the impression that we're keeping in touch online, which we are, but a very poor substitute for the real thing, that is meeting in the flesh. Like Mary, like Elizabeth did on this particular occasion. Leaving the pandemic aside, I think this especially applies to all home life. Parents need to spend more quality time with their children. Being a father or mother in the biological sense is one thing, but what really proves your mettle is that you are there with them in their formative years. I noticed a disturbing uh, article recently on the paper. It says that teenagers prefer to be with their peers than actually with their family, a lot of them. Parents who never give their smartphones a rest, I know we're all a bit of slave to the, sm the smartphones, but parents who never give them a rest can really rankle their children no end. One little boy in class one, I think he may be from St. Maria's, he said, I hate my mother's smartphone. I don't hate my mother, but I hate my mother's smartphone. I wish it had never been invented. Yes, perfect families are the stuff of fables. But parenting can't be left chance. You only get one shot at it. Now, being part, of course, of a faith community will really help the children. You know, we're part of a normal family and we gather together at Christmas, but the family of God really gathers together in droves at Christmas and the children have a right to be with that family, not just at Christmas, but throughout the whole year. Father Peyton, I don't know whether have you ever heard of him or not, he was an Irish priest from Mayo, but he spent most of his life in America. He had an American accent. He's known as the Rosary Priest, and this is what he said. The family that prays together, and that includes Sunday Mass, the family that prays together stays together. Mary and Elizabeth were also women of very sturdy faith. 
unlike her husband, Zachary, who doubted the angel, and if you remember, he was struck dumb. dumb. Elizabeth believed the angel Gabriel, who said she would conceive, though she was well on in years. Mary, the mother of God, also took on board the angel's message when she said, let what you have said be done to me. Some people are dismissive of all this because they say it's biologically impossible. But they forgot what the angel said to Mary, nothing is impossible to God. And we should believe that as well. Some people only believe what can be scientifically proven. They even doubt that Jesus worked miracles. Our Lord once asked St. Peter, who was a master fisherman, to cast out the nets in the lake where he knew the fish were few and far between. Against his better judgment, he gave way to Jesus, saying, at your words, just like Mary, let what you have said be done to me. St. Peter said the same, at your words, he said, I will let down the net. And we know what happened that the boat was filled to sinking point with fish. Now that's the faith which Jesus wants families to have. Mary had it, and it saw through all those difficulties, especially those associated with the birth of Jesus. So too Elizabeth. That's the faith which will see us through our present troubles and point the way to deeper family solidarity in good times and in bad. In this, may the Holy Family of Nazareth be our inspiration and guide. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate, celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are you who have believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled.
Let us pray. Lord, may participation in this divine mystery provide enduring protection for your people, so that being subject to your glorious majesty in dedicated service, they may know abundant health in mind and body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ, and may you all have a very joyful and peaceful Christmas. Thanks be to God. <laughs>